Now let's read some additional verses that speak about the conditionality of the promise that God gave to Israel. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And what I want you to notice that the word if is constantly used in these promises as a prerequisite, just like we read in um, Exodus chapter 19. Just keep in mind, as we read these promises, you'll find those, that word, if and then. You're like, if you do this, then I'll do that. Notice Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 19 to 20. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be, what? Obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Now let me ask you, do these two verses here show that God's covenant with the nation of Israel was conditional? Absolutely. But notice what the text says. It says that Israel would become like the nations that were cast out of Canaan. And let me ask you, were those nations cast out for good? They absolutely were. Now turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Friends, God never chooses anyone unconditionally. This idea that God chose Israel and you know, there's no turning back is nothing more than a uh, once saved, always saved type of mentality which is not a biblical idea. You know, once elected, always elected. Friends, that's not found in the Bible. It's just not there. Now, the main reason why it's not a biblical idea is because God always gives us freedom of choice. Now, notice Deuteronomy chapter 28. Notice verse 1. And again, take notice of the word if. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Is that a conditional promise, friends? It absolutely is. Now, now notice what will happen if they don't listen to the voice of the Lord. Uh, look at verse 15. And by the way, who is it that is speaking here throughout Deut Deuteronomy? It is Jesus himself. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh, friends, notice that word Lord. It's in all capital letters. Remember in our study, that is the word Jehovah. And we found out that that is none other than Jesus Christ. So this is Jesus speaking. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then, friends, the rest of the chapter goes on to list all of the curses and, uh, you know, if you read it there, it's a pretty amazing list. Look at verse 58 and 59 in Deuteronomy 28. Verse 58 and 59. What's the first word of uh, verse 58? If. It says, If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then... See that? Conditional. If you do this, or you know, if you don't do this, then it says, Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. And then again, you know, you can read uh, the curses of the covenant if you keep reading. So clearly we see that the election of Israel was conditioned upon their obedience to the covenant of God. And what was the covenant? Well, remember Isaiah 49 verse 6? 
It was the, you know, it was the preserving of the truth and it was to spread the word that the Messiah was coming. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30, look at verse 9 and 10. It says, And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Notice verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Again, friends, are God's promises and blessings to Israel conditional? There's no question about it. Look at verse 15 to 18, right there in the same chapter, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 to 18. It says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day, notice that ye shall surely, what? Perish. Friends, what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it says here that ye shall not perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest long, look at verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. So friends, who is, again, who is this Lord that is the life of them? Well, it is Jesus. Now what happens if they arise and try and destroy this Lord of theirs? And think about it now, friends. You, you mean to tell me that God is going to fulfill the covenant promises anyway? You know, even if they reject him, God is still going to fulfill his promises? Friends, that's not going to happen. It's not. And if you hang in there for this whole Israel study, you're going to see that so clearly throughout the whole Bible, even in the New Testament. Um, again, verse 20, it says that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord, which is Jesus, swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. Now, Let's go to Joshua chapter 24. Here's another promise. Listen, friends, let's read it and you tell me if it's conditional or not. Joshua 24, notice verse 20. What's the first word? It says, if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. Is this conditional? Well, it says, if you forsake the Lord. So that makes it conditional. 